Yeah, I could have said it if I turn my I actually, I know somebody who can. Oh, really? Okay. Well, then we should talk then. Uh, okay. P will be 99. Okay. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah, let's get him, let's get him some. Well, he made a big difference in my application. Well, she's all, she's going to be going to the ship in Jamaica and she's starting her routine. Really? And she'll be there for six months when she comes back. So she's going to just start doing it. So. All right. What you going to do then? Okay, everybody's here. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Durham City County Planning Commission. The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council and the County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to the elected officials. You should know that the elected officials will have the final say of any issue before us tonight. If you wish to speak to an item tonight, please go to the table on my left and sign up to speak. For those who wish to speak, please state your name and your address clearly when you come to the podium. Please speak clearly into the microphone because you're being televised. Each side, those speaking in favor of an item and those speaking in opposition to an item will have 10 minutes to present for each side. The time will be divided among all persons wishing to speak. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative, so if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation to the elected body is for denial. Thank you. Could we have the roll call, please? Mr. Alturk? Present. Mr. Bryan? Present. Mr. Busby? Present. Ms. Freeman? Present. Mr. Ghosh? Present. Mr. Gibbs? Present. Mr. Harris? Present. Mr. Hornbuckle? Present. Ms. Hyman? Present. Mr. Johnson? Present. Mr. Kinchin? Present. Mr. Miller? Present. Mr. Van? Present. Mr. Whitley? Present. We have a quorum, 14 members. Thank you. So we have. Okay. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Yes. If, if I may suggest, it's my understanding that in our agenda item seven, the Creekside Commons case, we have a sim simple procedural request. Um, it, it, and I, it, just looking at the audience, it is my assumption that there are a great many people here who have come to hear that case. Um, would it be uh, convenient for them and for us to go ahead and hear that procedural request and dispose of that uh, before we do uh, go into our regular cases in item six? Is that a motion? That's a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. The motion is to move item seven before item six. And move item seven before item six. Are there any comments or questions? Um, yes. Um, I understand the point, although if there are uh, a lot of people here to speak on that uh, topic, I feel like, I mean, we do have a case in front of it and they are in front of it because you know they were presumably filed first or whatever, and um, you know I wouldn't want to make th those applicants wait until the end of that end of our Creekside Commons hearing. I'm assuming that pe the people here do want to speak on it. Does that makes sense. Actually, my motion was based upon the assumption that they wouldn't speak and that we could dispose of that matter quickly. But I could be wrong. 
Okay, the motion on the floor is to move item seven before item six. Are there additional comments? If not, all in favor of that motion, please raise your right hand. It's nine. All opposed? Motion carries nine to five. Okay. And one additional thing under announcements, in which you don't have, under uh, <clears throat> uh, new business, uh, let's address November the 8th, which is election day and our meeting day. So let the board address that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the chair will now <clears throat> excuse me, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as mod modified. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to move the uh, agenda as modified. Is there a second? Second. Second by uh, Freeman. Commissioner Freeman. All those in favor, Ray, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is approval of it August the 9th meeting minutes comments if i may mr chairman uh my comments and i believe perhaps miss hyman's comments were left out of the material not, not this time my comments were left out and my only concern is is that going forward uh those comments be included in the materials that we send to the council and, and staff has is, is assured me that those are there, even if they are not in the packet we are voting on tonight. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm satisfied. Okay, I'm there. No more comments. Yes, Commissioner. I, I just wanted to move approval of the minutes as presented. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do have a change. Okay, it's been motioned and seconded that we approve the minutes as presented. And we have a comment from Commissioner Gibbs. Well, I, my note, uh, uh, re-elected should be changed to re-evaluated. Uh, it's on, well, on the first page, uh, well, my vote. Yeah. Gibbs voted for development. Entire 100 plus acres should be re evaluated. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, the motion. Uh, will you accept Chair? an amendment? Yes. While, while, while we're at it, my name is spelled wrong on the same page. <laughs> okay, did you get that? Uh, so Okay, would you, uh, will the maker of the motion, I mean his motion to include the corrections? Uh, I move the adoption of the minutes as corrected. I second, same. Motion and second that the minutes be received and approved as corrected. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the next item on our agenda is item number seven, the public hearing. We'll open the public hearing for the zoning map change request for Creekside Commons Z16 quadruple zero one. And we have a new staff member doing the presentation. <laughs> bear with me. Yes, please bear with me. Uh, Steve Medlin with the planning department. Uh, I am filling in for my entire staff, which happens to be in Asheville this evening at a national, I mean, a statewide conference. Yeah, fortunately, they get to go and I don't. Um, this case is case Z1601, which is Creekside Commons, which is a request by NVR Ryan Holmes. Uh, Stephen Freeman to rezone the current site from RS 20 to a PDR 6.302. Um, 
earlier today the staff received a request and I think the Planning Commission received a request from the applicant to consider a 30-day deferral of this item uh, staff obviously has no issue with a deferral being granted for this case in order for the applicant to modify their development plan and to potentially work with the adjacent property owners and citizens in the area to address some of their concerns uh, staff will be glad to answer any questions that you may have at this point, but we're going to reserve our full presentation until this item potentially is, this issue is decided. Thank you. I have two people wishing to speak in favor of this item and five people wishing to speak against. Okay. The, I understand the applicant may have a motion to for consideration. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Ken Spaulding. I represent the applicant in there. I was just brought into this case last week, and uh, so was Mr. Uh, Stangiel, and we saw that there were some needs uh, to meet with the residents again, as well as some cleaning up some issues in regard to uh, our text our committed elements uh, to clear that up with staff. I would like to uh, reserve any further presentation uh, unless or until uh, we have to go further based on you all's vote. But I think it's very important for us to make sure that we have met with the residents again since we're now involved with this and to hear them out completely and to see <coughs> what, if anything, we can do to address their concerns. Uh, it's clear from some emails I've read it's very important to them about some issues. We need to understand the issues better and we need to be able to explain the situation better and to get as much input to make any modifications if they're, if they're going to be possible. So I would respectfully request that uh, and move that uh, this be continued over or deferred over uh, for 30 days. Thank you very much. Commissioner Bryant. Uh, yeah, is we open to discussion on this? We have not closed a public hearing, mm -hmm. okay? Before we bring it yeah. to the, for, before the commissioners, he's making a request. He's not making a motion. The motion will have to come from someone up here. So he's making a request for a continuance for 30 days. Now, before I close the public hearing, there were five people from the community that signed up to speak in against. Uh, if the motion is granted, or his request is granted, they're going to have a 30-day continuance. In other words, it'll come back in October. We're not, if the motion is granted and, and moved upon, we will not make any decision on it tonight. And my question to the five people that signed up to speak in against, uh, is there anyone that just really would like to speak tonight with reference to this or wait until October to speak after the full presentation has been made by, from both staff and the applicant? Come to the mic, please, and state your name and address. Michael. Greeting. <coughs> Greetings, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Mike Cutlip. Uh, I'm a resident at 9 Tea House Court in South Durham. Uh, my only question is not to, to speak necessarily to the proposed development, but just to the possibility of 30 days not being enough time to meet with uh, the residents in the area and address the concerns that they have. Uh, I don't know if uh, there could be a motion for po possibly 60 days. You can request a 60-day continuance. I would like to request a 60-day continuance okay. instead of 30 days. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we have two requests. We have a request from the applicant for 30-day continuance. We have a request from the community for 60-day continuance. So if no one else wishing to speak, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. and hear what the commissioners, Commissioner Bryan. I, <clears throat> I agree with the community uh, based on what I've read so far from the neighbors uh, and looking at the plan, I think 60 days is gonna be 
even pushing it to really get this cleaned up if it's even possible to clean it up. So I'm going to move that we reopen the public hearing and uh, continue it for 60 days. Had a motion for a continuance for second. 60 days. I have a second from Commissioner Miller. Is there any other discussion? Commissioner Whitley. Yes, is it possible, um, who's here from transportation? Bill Judge. Yes. Um, Creekside Elementary School, in the mornings and the evenings, park, the cars are, are in a uh, parking lot. Commissioner Whitley, I'm going to rule you out of order. Uh, well, let, let me ask my question. Yeah, but the discussion, the motion on the floor is for a continuous. You're asking about the project. You're, you're speaking to I'm, the project. I'm, I'm wondering whether we can, I know it doesn't fit the, the criteria for transportation evaluation, but. You're I'm, still asking about the project and not the motion that's on the floor. The motion on the floor is whether to grant a continuous or not. You understand what, what I'm talking about? I understand. Okay. I understand, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. I, I right. want to get some business done in the, in the 60 days. Are there other comments, uh, Commissioner uh, Ghosh? Thank you, Chair Harris. Um, my comment is that without, I, I know we all received emails and, um, and uh, are, you know, have read the report and all of that, but without opening the public hearing, I don't know how we can make a determination that 60 days would be required rather than 30 days. Um, and I think the, just from a practical standpoint, if, if they are not able to resolve the, the issues in 30 days, then they would come back and ask for another continuance, which they would be able to do. Uh, so I'm, in, I'm inclined, uh, to not vote for a 60 day, but to vote for a 30 day continuance because it is possible that they would be able to meet with the neighbors and address their concerns in that amount of time. And I don't see any reason to push it out 60 days if they can do it in 30. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Freeman. Can I ask a question of rep the representative that was speaking? Uh, is it speaking to the motion yes. or is it speaking to the project? Specifically to the motion. Okay. Is it a, is, I just want to know that if you think the uh, property owner or whoever is working on this project would be amenable to 60 days rather than the 30 days. It doesn't matter whether he's amenable or not. If we say 60, it's 60. I, I just spoke with the developer, and he f he truly feels we can get it done in 30 days, but that's, that's it. Do you want to? May he just respond to that person? Sure. Yeah, I, my name is Britt Spivey, and I work with NVR, the applicant. Um, the only reason I think we could, that 30 days is reasonable is the, there's actually been a meeting with the homeowners already uh, that took place, and actually some of the tax commitments came from that meeting. Uh, we also have people here in support of the project, too, um, that would rather see it happen sooner than, than later. So um, I'm willing to act as quickly as possible with Weston Downs to have a second meeting. Do you have meeting dates already lined up? I do not. OK. No. So I think that the 60 days might probably work better then. If 30 days does not work, I agree. OK. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, the motion on the floor. Commissioner Johnson. I'm just curious to the, the, the resident who requ uh, requested the 60 days, uh, could he provide insight as into why he uh, doesn't feel that 30 days is enough time? Like what? Let, me, let, let me do that. Okay. Uh, they have to have information in for the agenda two weeks prior to the meeting. So right now from, from tonight, they would have like a week or a week and a half to get the information in to staff for the October meeting. And so it's even if they had the meetings already lined up, it would still be tight and pushing it in order to get the material or into the staff 
in time enough for the October meeting. They only have about a week and a week and a half. That's very helpful. Thanks. Any other comments? Can I speak one more time? Yes. Uh, we're fine with 60 days. If that's what it takes to make the council happy and to give the neighborhood a chance to, to schedule a meeting, then we're fine with that. Okay, thank you. Okay, the motion on the floor is for case number Z16001 to have a 60 day continuance. To our November meeting. Whatever day that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it may not be six. It may be. Okay, but to our November meeting. So, all those in favor of this motion, please raise their right hand. Thank you. And thank you, neighbors, for coming and thank you for granting us this leadway. And I also thank the people from. Uh, Ellis Road townhouses for allowing us to do this. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Now would be the time for me to talk about the possibilities between here and 60 days. Okay, ma'am, you need to speak up. You're being televised. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask the question about um, getting a staff um, evaluation of traffic um, right there um, by um, Creekside Elementary School that backs up and creates a one, one lane um, traffic instead of two lanes. Bill? Yeah. Uh, Bill Judge with Transportation. Um, the only thing I can really answer is that the ordinance has very specific criteria for when we can uh, threshold for when we can require a traffic impact analysis. This site is currently presented is under that criteria. So there, there's no basis for us to require an, any additional traffic impact analysis or study. Um, if in conversations with the neighbors or the commissioners and ultimately the city council, if those are concerns, then those are certainly things that the, the applicant can volunteer and, and provide, but, but there's no ordinance requirement for it. Mr. Chairman, I, I, um, I came from Chapel Hill Creekside Elementary School to come here, and there's no way they can do that project without some um, traffic calming. Okay, Mr. Commissioner, again, I'm going to rule you out of order because you're speaking to a, something that's not even on the, on the floor right now. I'll, I'll bring it back in 60 days. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. The next item is public hearing. Open the public hearing for Ellis Road townhouses A16 quadruple zero three and Z16 quadruple zero four. Good evening. I'm Laura Woods with the planning department. I'll be presenting both cases. Um, this evening and these cases were previously before the Commission on July 12 2016 the case was deferred two cycles because the applicant proffered a new uh, commitment at that time so we're bringing back the cases this evening my my presentations will be slightly dif different this evening since you've seen the full presentations before I'm going to present a slightly abbreviated version um, hopefully uh, you will remember the case well enough that uh, if if you do not and would prefer me to pull up the PowerPoints from July we can certainly do that to look at the maps uh, case 16 003 Ellis Road townhomes is a proposed amendment to the comprehensive plan for four parcels comprising 25.6 acres generally located in southeast Durham at 25 one one Ellis Road. It's directly east of the Southern Rail Corridor and north of Ellis Road. Um, as I stated, the this case and the um, associated zoning case were deferred two cycles, um, owing to some issues that have been resolved. And I'll touch on this more fully 
when I discuss the zoning codes. Subject site is presently designated low density residential. That's four, dense, four di dwelling units or less per acre. Um, the applicant, Ellis Road Residential 2 LP, requests a designation of low medium density residential that would raise the um, density to four to eight units per acre. The intended land use is a townhome community. Um, to the north of the site is recreation and open space. To the east is single family residential and townhomes. To the south is vacant, a single family residence and multifamily residential. And to the west, the aforementioned real corridor and vacant land. As staff concluded in July when we did the full presentation, the, we find the, uh, the proposal consistent with the four criteria for plan amendments, those being the proposed change would be consistent with intent, the intent, goals, and policies of adopted plans. The proposed change would be compatible with surrounding land uses and future designated land uses. Uh, the proposed change would not create substantial adverse impacts in the adjacent, in the adjacent area and the subject site is of adequate shape and size to accommodate the proposed use. Therefore, staff recommends approval of the plan amendment. That concludes my presentation on the plan amendment. We will now move to the next case, the associated zoning case Z1600004. And here the applicant is requesting a change from a residential suburban 20 to PDR or planned development residential 7.55. A voluntary annexation petition has been submitted in conjunction with this request. The case is clear of comments at this point and the applicant and city have agreed to a utility extension agreement. The development plan associated with this request includes the following, following commitments. Um, it will be townhomes to a maximum of 165 dwelling units. The new commitment in the uh, development plan is that units containing garages shall utilize a decorative garage door design, including but not limited to windows or carriage style doors. I believe that was a point of contention in July. So they have addressed that. There are four access points on the development plan. There are tree preservation areas and a maximum impervious surface of 60%. Text commitment, commitments include widening of Ellis Road from an e for an eastbound turn lane and continuous three lane cross section from Taylor Ridge Drive to the proposed site access number three, four feet of additional asphalt on Ellis Road for accommodation of a bicycle lane, a bus shelter, and design commitments. Staff determined that the proposals meet the requirements of the Unified Development Ordinance and should the plan amendment be passed, it would meet uh, the comprehensive plan as well. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. I shall turn it back over to the board. Susan, can I get your sign-up sheet? Yeah, she came, took it back. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, three people signed up to speak. All is in favor of the project. So uh, I will entertain three minutes each uh, three and a third minutes each or roughly four minutes each for each of you to present. Uh, Laura Holman. Thank you, members of the Planning Commission. Again, my name is Laura Holman with Spalding & Norris, uh, representing the applicant. Thank you very much uh, for allowing us to come back here this evening and just a response from the earlier agenda item 60 days was very helpful 
<laughs> so thank you. Um, we takeaways from the last planning commission meeting, as uh, the staff member stated, uh, we were able to work out and finalize the utility um, extension agreement with the city. That has been done, it is finalized, and it is poised to move forward with rezoning and annexation to city council. Um, so we're all, we're all finalized there. Uh, the second uh, item of, on the list uh, was to work with staff to work out a design commitment uh, speaking to um, a decorative garage door. And as um, the staff member stated, we have done that as well. Um, that has been stated and added to our uh, published and finalized development plan. So that has been done as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stephen William Stevens. Good evening, Mr. Chair, and also members of the commission. Uh, my name is William Stevens, 1710 Autumn Ridge Drive in Durham, and I've been serving as the pastor of the Southside Church since 1982. We are located on Elmira Avenue, where we also house a private elementary school that provides affordable education to the community. When we purchased the property on Ellis Road, we did so with the intent of developing the 25 acres to help meet some of the needs we saw that existed in that community. However, due to reasons beyond our control, we decided to place the property on the market. When we were approached by the builders, we had no idea who they really were. After speaking with the representatives of the Halley Company, it became clear that their intent for the property is similar to the vision we had in mind, except for church building and school. I discovered they have a great reputation and what they are doing in that part of the community. They have done projects in Apex as well as Holly Springs. And although we were planning a project different from the one they have in mind, I do believe housing options are important in this area with its close proximity to the RTP. These townhomes will complement the existing residents as well as professional office and campuses nearby. My understanding is the project is meeting all development requirements by agreeing to everything the city has asked in terms of roadway improvements on Ellis Road as well as utility extensions. In my honest opinion, this will greatly improve that area. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Isaac Woods. Isaac Woods. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to speak to this item? If not, then we will close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Do we have commissioners wishing to speak? Do we have commissioners wishing to speak? Commissioner Goosh. Just quickly, I want to thank you guys for, uh, you know, making the changes and, and working to uh, finalize your uh, utility extension agreement with the city. I know those were the primary outstanding issues that we had when it was before us two months ago. So I commend your efforts in getting those things resolved. And I plan to vote in favor of this whenever a motion comes available. Okay, if there's Commissioner Miller. I have a question, if I may, of the developer. If you could come to the mic, I'd appreciate it. It looks like your building envelope line is co-equal with the railway 200 foot right of way line. Uh, if the railway were to expand in that right-of-way, uh, is there any plan or anything to provide any kind of planning or buffer on your property to protect your residents from the potentiality of an expanded railway usage inside that right-of-way? Sure, I understand your question. Uh, we have we have talked about that, and um, of course, you know, we'll, we delve into that when we get into our level four site plan. Uh, but certainly um, there is, there is um, we believe, some, some area, some variation where we can provide some sort of buffer for that. I don't have a lot of experience with railway right of, rights of way. It seems like 200 feet, 100 feet is a lot. And I don't know what they're planning, whether they plan to expand the tracks or usage in there. So that was just a concern I had. Then the last question I have, if I may, Mr. Chairman 
is I see that you have a potential crossing point for that uh, creek or stream that runs through there. Uh, would you carry your roadway over like on a culvert uh, or as a bridge? What have you got in mind for that? Culvert, yes. Culvert, mm -hmm. thank you. That's all I have. Any other comments, questions? If not, the chair will entertain a motion. Commissioner Bryan. Uh, please don't leave. Okay. Um, are you planning to have any amenities for the residents of these townhomes? Yes, there will be some sort of amenity. Um, it may be, um, you know, a playground area. Well, but it certainly will be a developed amenity feature for the residents. Because you have no commitment on your development plan for any amenities. So you can state what you just said at a public hearing, but there's no way to enforce it. No, I mean, we would, you would certainly be able to comment that when we get to site plan and see what's, what's actually before, before you at that time. Well, we don't see the site plan. Right. I understand. <laughs> and the pastor said something about, you know, the, a mixture of housing in there and everything. Will any affordable housing be part of this development? No, these will be for sale market rate townhomes. No affordable housing? No. Thank you. Any more comments? The chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, then I move that we send case A16 quadruple zero three forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Second. second. Motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Bryan that we send A16 A16 quadruple zero three to the elected body with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those in opposition? Motion carries 13 to 1. Okay. And zoning case? If I may, Mr. Chairman, I move that we send case Z16 quadruple zero four forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. And Mr. Medlin, before I finish my motion, it, this case does go to the City Council because it's connected with an annexation. All right, thank you. That we send it forward to the City Council with a, uh, for, with a favorable recommendation. Motion by Miller, second by Commissioner Whitley, that we send A, I mean, Z at 16 quadruple zero four forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. All those in favor, please raise the right hand. All those in opposition? Okay, thank you. The next thing on our agenda is the election of chair and vice chair for the next year. And according to our bylaws, that's done by the planning director or his designee. Good evening again, Steve Medlin with the planning department. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open the floor for nominations for the chair. I nominate Commissioner Hyman for chair. Second. <clears throat> Have a motion and a second. Any other nominations? Hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Let the record reflect it was a unanimous vote uh, that Ms. Hyman has been elected chair. Vice this chair. Vice chair. Vice chair now. We have to do Elect vice chair. I, I understand. Uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm not you. leaving yet. Oh, <laughs> Just picking up my paper. Uh, at this time, I'll open the floor for nominations for vice chair. Mr. Right. Chairman, I nominate Mr. Busby for vice Second. chair. Any further nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of Mr. Busby, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Let the record reflect that was unanimous vote of Mr. Busby for vice chair. Congratulations. Congratulations to the both of you. <laughs> okay. The, the, the next item on the agenda is new business, and I, I added the uh, November the 8th. How do the commission want to address that? Uh, 
do we want to move it out a week? Or? Well, I don't know what the yeah. staff wants, thinks of that. Yeah, I'd like, I would, Mr. Chair, if I may, I, I'd, I'd like to hear the staff's recommendation, but I would strongly like to not have our meeting on election night, especially while the polls are still open. But I'm open to when we, we move it. Uh, it is solely the board's uh, decision as to when you want to have the meeting. We just need to know well in advance to ensure that we can secure the venue and also make sure that we do all proper notice uh, according to, to general statute. Uh, the we haven't noticed anything already. For we that have day. not. Okay. So at this point, we are, we are we're two months out. So we have plenty of time uh, to to work through the logistics. Uh, in terms of preference, obviously the staff would prefer uh, either a Tuesday or Wednesday night, just simply because it doesn't have, it doesn't conflict with other boards and commissions that we may be serving that evening. Whether you want to move it to uh, the Wednesday following the election or the following week, certainly is, or or whatever is the discretion of the body. Commissioner Miller. I was wondering if anybody on the commission had any strenuous objections to proceeding on the 9th, which is the closest day to our regular schedule. I have in mind that we have continued that 1K 60 days uh, with the uh, uh, gracious consent of the developer who wanted 30, and I thought that that one day's delay would be more acceptable to, to them under those circumstances than a full week. No problem. Motion it. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure it was, it was, if somebody on the commission really had a strenuous objection that we, okay. I was just going to ask if it might be possible to move up a week to like the first and similar to your thought process and shortening the 60 days a little bit. I don't know if that works for everyone, but. And so that would be the second? That would be the. This first or the. November 1st. The first. And that that doesn't cause any problems from the staff perspective to move it up a week. Yeah. Okay. If I may, then, Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, move our regularly scheduled uh, planning commission meeting uh, from November eighth to November first. Uh, at 5.30 in uh, these chambers if they are available. And if they are not available on that day, that we instead have as a, a ready alternate for the staff to work with, uh, that we move that November 8th meeting to the 9th to these chambers uh, at 5.30 p.m. Let me have one motion. You, you did a compound motion, and I'm not going to accept that. Well, I just think that since we are not coming back, and if the staff can't get the chambers, they might like to have two dates to work with. One is a primary and one is a secondary. So if, if I may interject, Mr. Chair, uh, I think it, it's certainly reasonable for staff to assume that we will be able to find a venue, whether it's this room, uh, another room. or another venue within City Hall or even the county building that would suffice, though we may not be able to broadcast if we don't get this venue, uh, obviously. Uh, but we certainly can work to get a proper venue for your for your meeting on the first under those circumstances mr. chairman I withdraw my motion and move that we move our November 8th meeting to November 1st at a venue that the staff finds for us uh, 530 p.m. Second. Second. motion and second it that we move our November meeting from election night to a week earlier which would be November the 1st uh, any additional discussion all in favor, please raise the right hand. Those in opposition? Uh, 13 to 1. Okay. So we had one no vote, right? Johnson, no vote. Um, Mr. Whitley, I did not get Mr. Johnson's vote. Yeah, that's no vote. So it was 12. 12 to 2. 12. Okay, so the motion carries. Uh, is there any other new business whether you, can, you have what's coming up next month? Sadly, I don't really have oh, a question. Oh, it's a staff going. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Miller. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, with Mr. Judge still here, uh, and, and I think may, perhaps consistent with where Mr. Whitley was going, with regard to the case, uh, 
16 quadruple zero one, the Creekside Commons case, it would be great. I would like to know, uh, in preparation for that case, to know if there are reasonably current traffic counts for Farrington in the area and Ephesus Church Road in the area, to have the, that information uh, whenever you can make it available between now and the first. And if, if you foresee a problem with using that information and evaluating this case, tell me what that is so I'll yeah. be armed. Um, certainly, uh, right now, the information in the packet is the, the, the best information we have available. However, as you've probably noticed, it is 2013 data. And generally, by about this time of year, we usually have the, the 2015. So. We're expecting it any day, so certainly if we get it between now and, and the November meeting, we'll update those numbers and those, those figures, not only for this case, but we do that routinely for every, every case. Is it? Never mind. Thank yeah. you very much, Mr. Jay. Susan. I do have one additional um, uh, item for new business, and I would like to move to the mic to read a resolution of appreciation for Mr. David Harris. <laughs> Mr. Harris, if you will join me, please. This is a resolution of appreciation of Mr. David Harris. Whereas Mr. David Harris acted as chair of the Durham Planning Commission from September of 2014 through September of 2016 and whereas the Durham Planning Commission and the citizens and uh, city of Durham and the county of Durham have benefited from the dedicated efforts that he displayed while serving as a member of the Durham Planning Commission. And whereas this commission desires to express its appreciation for the public of a job well done, now therefore be it resolved by the Durham Planning Commission, one, that this commission does hereby express its sincere appreciation for the service rendered by Mr. Harris to the citizens of this community. And number two, that the clerk of the commission is hereby directed to spread this resolution in its entirety upon the official minutes of this commission. And this resolution is hereby presented to Mr. Harris as a token of the high esteem held for him, adopted this 13th day of September 2016 and I would just like to say personally for to this individual who has sat next to me I have appreciated all that he has done his guidance his leadership and that we it is a rare opportunity that individuals step forward and give their time to the community it is so much appreciated and at this time I know we'd like to hear from Mr. Harris Thank you, and the chair will now entertain a motion for adjournment. <laughs> no, actually, Mr. <laughs> chairman, uh, given the date that's been appended to that resolution, uh, I move the resolution. <laughs> Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the resolution be adopted by this body. And um, so uh, are we ready for the question? All in favor of this motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. And Mr. Harris, we thank you so very much. And now I move to adjourn. <laughs>